you never know what's hiding just under the surface. Let me give you a little background on this. Middle of last year, I says, I have an idea for a slant build that I want to do down the road. So let me start gathering parts and, and getting stuff prepared so that when we're ready to go with this, I'll have everything good to go. So for this particular thing, I needed a good, thick, heavy block. I need a good steel crank. So I had several slants sitting around and I said, all right, let me inspect these things. So I went over each of the blocks that I had four blocks. I went over all four of them, like with a fine tooth comb. I looked, I scrutinized everything. And then I found the one that I considered to be the perfect candidate for this. So I packed it off to the machine shop. I got it back, I don't know, three weeks ago, a month ago. And it's been just sitting in a plastic bag since I picked it up. I didn't even bother looking at it. So we we're going to shoot the video yesterday on the M-Line 6s. I said, well, let me use this slant. So I took it in a plastic bag. I rolled it upside down. We shot that video. And then today I says, you know what? Okay, let me clean this thing up, inspect it all again, give it a coat of paint so that it doesn't surface frost or anything like that. And it'll be ready when we're ready to do this engine. So two things on this I got to show you guys. And if you're, if you're new to this, if you've never been down these roads, th pay attention because these are important things. All right, so I got the block and I had it bored 60 over and I had it decked 100 thousandths of an inch. So here's what happened. When I had this block, when I was looking over my blocks, I cleaned the deck on this thing as best I could and I inspected it to make sure that the deck was good. I, I looked over every aspect of this engine to make sure that it was like, this is the one I want to invest my time and money in. But after the 100,000th cut on the block, look what I found. That's what's called an occlusion, okay? That's where either casting sand broke loose during the course of this thing being casted, or it's a bubble in the, in the cast iron itself. This one here is 50 thousandths of an inch, just over 50 thousandths of an inch deep. Now this was not here before we cut it, which means that this was hiding just under the surface. Now this one here, it doesn't bother me other than, because it's, it's in a completely inconsequential area. There, there's really nothing here at all. So this one itself doesn't bother me, but the fact that there are occlusions in this block does bother me, because they could be anywhere. And then there's this one. Now this one isn't as deep as the other, Get a good look at that. Can you see that? Okay. It's not as deep as the other one, but look where it is. It's right exactly adjacent to the cylinder wall. So, this area here is, is going to be thick, you know, because that's the actual cylinder wall itself. Only this one's been cut 60. So, the, the, the cylinder wall here is actually much thinner than it started out. And you've got this occlusion right up next to it. So, now I have to be concerned that that occlusion or anything like it isn't deeper in the casting. There's a good chance that when I step on this thing, it'll crack if there's anything in there. Now, generally speaking, you'll have a block sonic checked. Now, these blocks here are usually thick, almost always, thick enough to go that, you know, 60 thousandths. They're intended, they're cast to take a 60 thousandths cut from the factory anything more than that and you're going beyond what was actually intended so no i didn't bother having this sonic tested the cylinder walls all look good and i've inspected them and i don't see any occlusions in the cylinder walls so i'm going to cross my fingers and hope that that's all there is to it and that's all there is to it and that the rest of the casting is perfect something like that in the main saddle area or in a, in a heavily stressed part of the block is where a crack will start like sometimes you'll you'll have an engine and you'll say well it'll crack you'll build an engine you have an old machine and everything or even at that you just have a regular engine and it cracks for like no reason well very often the reason it cracked is because you'll have a gap in the casting like those but in a very critical high stress area you put the suds to it and then that's it it lets go because it's it's a faulty casting 
I've already invested time and money in this block. So all I guess is I'm gonna cross my fingers and hope that it hope that it, it's it's gonna be okay. And it probably will be okay. But the point I'm trying to make is no matter how carefully you visually inspect the block, no matter how carefully you go over it, you never know what's just under the surface. So just keep that in mind. There's no way to find stuff like that. All right. The second thing I wanted to show you is that, so I told you I had the block board 60 over and I had a hundred thousands cut off the deck. Normal procedures. And the machine shop that I deal with, I've been dealing with them for years and they do first rate work. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not going to, I'm not going to knock them or anything like that. But they, they got a little sloppy on this one. They might have had a new guy on the job or they were just rushing to get stuff out the door. I don't know the situation. But there's two things that they neglected to do. That if you ever have a block decked, these are things you need to know. You send your block off to the machine shop and you're going to have them take 10,000, 20,000, 100,000, whatever it is off the deck. These are two things that you need to know and you need to check before you pick it up. And I didn't check before I picked it up. Who's a fool, right? Okay. The first is that when they cut the deck, what you're doing is you're cutting the chamfer off the top of the head bolts. So you see right now, the top of the head bolts each have a fairly irregular opening. That's supposed to be chamfered. Now, the main reason why you chamfer that, the important thing, is that as you tighten the head bolt and, it, and you, the, the head bolt starts to stretch, it'll find an area here and it'll crack it out. And there's a good possibility that crack won't allow the head gasket to lay flat. It'll leak. So whenever you have a block deck, you need to go over each of the head bolt holes and you need to chamfer them. See this one? Look, look at the metal. It's just hanging off the edge of that there. All right. So that's not a big deal. I have a uh, burr that's just exactly the right diameter for that, the right pitch, the right diameter. So that's no big deal. I can, I can take care of that. But this is a big deal. So they bored the block first, and then they decked it. Now, when you bore a block, one of the things you have to do is put a slight chamfer around the edge of the cylinder walls here. Now, the reason you have to do that is because when you go to put the engine together, well, first off, you should never have a sharp edge in an area like that. It should always be rounded or chamfered. But now what happens is when you go to put that together, and you go to slide the pistons in, so you put your piston in the piston ring compressor and you, you lube it all up and you go to tap it in. Well, unless there's a little chamfer there, and, and not a big chamfer, just a, just a slight chamfer for the ring compressor to set, set down into, the rings, especially the oil rings, will pop out. If you, don't, if you don't drive the piston in at exactly the right speed to get it past that, the ring will pop out and it'll catch on that edge. So there has to be a little tiny bit of a chamfer in there for the ring compressor once once the compressor's tightened down for it to sit kind of down you know not not on the deck but just slightly down into the deck very slight and you know so that it's it's not it's not it's not a it's not a, a, a game ender or anything like that but it, the right way to do it is to have a chamfer there so I don't have it. There's a cone. It's an abrasive cone that's used for that. Typically, to put it on a put it on a drill. I don't have a cone for that. So I'm gonna have to run this back up there and have them put a little chamfer in it. But those are two things that you really gotta watch out for. And like I said, I've been using this machine shop for years. I trust them. They do fantastic work. They treat me okay. <laughs> I leave I leave a big pile of cash behind every time I leave there. But God bless them. They got a great business. They 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 just neglected a couple of things on this block. So we're going to go take care of that. But yeah, things you need to watch out for. Hidden things under the surface that you'll never find. And that, will, that can and will get you at the worst possible time. That's just part of the game, man. That's just, you're going to build hot rods. You're going to play with stuff. It's just part of the game. It comes with the territory. And... Even when you've got a machinist that you trust, still go over everything, scrutinize everything, because you never know. All right, that's it, guys. I'm going to finish up what I'm doing over here. I'll see you tomorrow.